Greetings everyone and welcome to a new video on my Parallax Occlusion node setup for Blender. Today I wanted to introduce you to some changes I've made um, to my node setup. Those changes are minor, but I think they will be very convenient and will improve the experience a lot. So uh, there are changes on the inside as well as on the outside. And I guess the first thing you will notice if you compare it to an older version is that the Z position is gone. So the Z position previously was to move around the texture to find a good place to focus kind of on the texture. Um, this is gone. I found a way around it. And instead, now you have the strength value, which is still altering the, um, well, the displacement strength. But you also have a minimum and a maximum value. Now those values are very useful if you want to clamp the texture into the values from zero to one. Now, many textures have the issues that the height values are a little bit all over the place. So you have the lowest value at 0 0.2 and the highest value for the heights for around 0 0.6 or something like this. So not really consistent, it's not going from zero to one. And this is what should help here. Now, how do you use this? Um, you see up here next to vector and alpha, you have the clamp view. Now this clamp view, if you plug this into your material output, you will see red and blue colors. Now the red colors are the depths and the blue colors are the heights. So if I go ahead and go inside here and I move this up, you can see we are slowly moving up the roof tiles um, with this red color. So what you want to do is go just at the bare minimum, like even go deeper or whatever you want. You can also, for example, if we go into the image editor and we search out our height map, um, let me see, let me see, let me see, should be this one, yeah. So you can go ahead and you just color pick the darkest color which you can find. So let's try this one. and. Then as well, you can also pick the highest color. So you go in, you take this one, maybe this is the height or maybe another one. And you go back to your 3D viewport and you see now the values are more or less adjusted. So with this in mind, we can now turn back to the normal place, how it was and voila. So I have made some changes to the, um, how do you say the persistence of the texture? Uh, previously, the parallax occlusion mapping had an issue, which was that um, it was wobbling around a little bit, like very much at certain places. That was because there was sort of a focal point above which everything was sharp, but beneath everything got wobbly. And the further it was pushed down, the harder it was to see the details. So everything got a little bit rounded. Everything was shaking around a little bit more. Now, um, this is a little bit more consistent. And as you can see, when I set the strength to zero, it's locked kind of with the highest place at zero and everything is moving downwards. Now we can try and go ahead and see if we can use another texture and I will show you the process on how to set this thing up. So first of all, I get rid of everything except those two things. So those are something you would usually load inside. If you go here, append, you take the file and you go to the node tree and you would import the POM node setup. This would load in your POM and along with it, you will have two more node groups, the POM iteration, which is inside of the POM. You don't need to mess with this, that's all fine. And you have the height map and there's a clamp coming with it as well, but it's that's useless. So the height map is to alter your height map, <laughs> obviously. So when I put this into the our material output, you will see that is our height map. So first things first, we choose our height map. So I have a bunch of textures here and I think we can go with this very nice spacey looking texture here. So upon loading this in, you will see immediately it's working almost instantly. Now, of course, we don't have the 
albedo texture yet. We don't have the diffuse color yet, but um, everything's pushed in. So what do we do now? We just go to the clamp view and we check uh, where are our heights and depths. So I could now go into the um, uh, image editor and pick the colors, or I could just move this here manually. So we go as deep as the last little bit of um, red color we can see and do the same thing with the heights. So go uh, higher and higher and higher. Ah, uh, there it's gone. So around here. It doesn't need to hit exactly, uh, but um, as precise as possible. It's usually a nice thing. So next thing we can do is we go ahead and load in our texture. Oh, I'll be the texture in this case now. So I take this, I plug the vector in here, and I plug the color in here, and we have ourselves our, well, our space cube, <laughs> in the matter of sense. So we put on a diffuse um, shader, and we get ourselves a bump. Now, this is something very important to mind when you set this thing up. Do not use the displacement because um, <laughs> I can show you how, uh, uh, what it's doing. But when I put in the displacement here, it will change the normals and this would cause the whole system to break. So uh, we want the normals to be unchanged and instead go over the bump map and plug in the normal here. This would give us a nice bump, but without altering the surface is normal because uh, when I, I can show this just real quick to you, you see that here the normal is mixing with the incoming vector and through this um, it's messing things up with, with if you mess with the normal. So yeah, go with the bump, don't go with the displacement. So now we have our bump inside. Now we have some nice neat shadows or shading effect to our surface. Uh, of course, you can load in many several maps inside. You can load in a roughness map. You can also load in a normal map and plug this one inside here instead or in addition. And of course, um, what did I want to say? Of course, uh, one last thing. We have our alpha node, which was inside the previous version as well. So you go in, you go to the diffuse, you put in a mix node, mix shader. Yeah, come on, it's loading. Um, get in a transparent. Uh, it's, it's, it's mocking up a little bit at the moment, but that's fine. And you mix it with the alpha and that's it. Of course, you always should make sure that you have blend mode to alpha clip or blend, but clip is usually the best in this case because it's a hard mask and usually it's not really, mm, how to say, it's only taking away computing power if you use blend because it's totally useless. So now, as you can see, we have some of the corners cut away, gives us some nice rounded corners and yeah, um, that's it from my side. Um, that's everything, basically. If you have any questions, just leave them to me in the comments. I will answer them gladly. Uh, I put a link to the download for this whole new setup into the description. Uh, it's on Gunroad, it's for free. However, if you want to support me, you can leave like one dollar or one euro or maybe even two, who knows? Like. If everyone who would download this thing from me would give one dollar, it would help me a lot already. <laughs> so, well, uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful to you. And see you for next video.